Yet another relatively flat day in the market, but for those following the ideas discussed on these videos, yet another day of dramatic outperformance. The oil companies, particularly Tom Lee's OIH, doing very well. And in addition, real estate, some of the real estate companies we talked about, AHT yesterday, now two days over 20% back to back. It's good to see, it's feeling good in the portfolio. And we are good, not just today, not just you know the day before, maybe tomorrow, who knows what tomorrow's action is gonna be. We don't play the day today over here. We play the long term. And we are positioned for the next several months, the next foreseeable trend and foreseeable future at this point in time. You know, obviously it's a very uncertain time and we plan on adjusting and we plan on getting out of these winners at some point in the future. Last year, let's do some review here. Last year, we were riding a lot of the more speculative tech, a lot of the CRISPR stocks, and we still have allocation of those. We won't get rid of that allocation for a very long time, but that allocation is much smaller and we had much more tech exposure. We got those gains and made a whole lot of money. Towards December, January, we started writing call options out against those and closing out some of those positions and shrinking them. Towards the end of 2020, we made some videos discussing and getting ready for 2021, where we discussed having 2021 story stocks. And the sectors we highlighted at the very end of December there, energy, real estate, gold, and gold miners. Now, gold has been in performing very interestingly. Now it's back up close to its all-time highs, but it had a substantial dip. You know, some of us, at least I did, bought gold call options that printed, but we exited those yesterday. We still like gold, don't want to not have any exposure to gold, but we don't want to be time sensitive with gold. We want to have gold as something that's not going to sell off too much and is always going to have some value. Let's not forget, gold is used in every computer. It's a beautiful metal. I have a beautiful gold watch. Lots of people like it and other gold products. Use of gold is only going to improve if you ask me. So you have gold as a store of value, just your wealth. You're not going to get rich on gold unless you do some silly options play. Gold is solid. You keep it solid. Therefore, we don't want options. The reason why I'm you know, giving a little hesitancy to the option play with gold is because we do expect interest rates to start to tick up. Um, this will be a reflexive move. This is not a reactionary move, rather. This is not a proactive move. The Fed won't raise rates proactively. That means we have to see some things occur in the economy first, which is inflation. And we are beginning to see, most importantly of which is inflation, you know, obviously labor improvements, but that will imply inflation. The Fed has been remaining very dovish and they've discussed the possibility of raising rates, but they need things to start to recover. And when things recover, we will see inflation. We are already seeing inflation. We're already seeing inflation substantially higher than had been expected, 2%. Now it's closer to three and 4%. We'll see what happens. You know, some areas of the economy, it's substantially higher than that. But, you know, consumer price index, broad index of prices, three, four percent. We'll see if that ticks up as the, you know, inflation is a delayed indicator. As the delay starts to catch up and that's going to be accelerated by the opening of the economy or of the of the economy, reopening of the economy. So when interest rates go up, that's not going to be so great for gold. Um, you know, obviously it depends how much interest rates go up, but it, it slows it down in the short term. In the long term, gold will still adjust for inflation. When interest rates rise, the demand for dollars goes up. So people, you know, have a higher demand for dollars relative to gold. That's just how it is. But in the long run, gold will still adjust for inflation. So gold is performing very well right now. We are not exiting long term gold positions. We're exiting short-term, speculative, gambling kind of type options plays that we have made a lot of money on because gold went down when it shouldn't have gone down. Now we're saying it doesn't make sense or it's not as good of a move to have dated, temporary options on 
uh, on gold. It just isn't when you've got this massive headwind that can shift the market for gold all of a sudden. Now, real estate. Real estate, good cash flow producing stocks. And when interest rates rise up, you might think, well, that should slow the real estate market. Yes. So I'm not saying you should buy a house as real estate. That is not a good decision. What you want is something that can adjust with inflation and produces cash flows. When there is inflation, the best performing stocks are dividend paying stocks. They can adjust the dividend with inflation and they are one of the most you know safest assets. Real estate among them is the best of the dividend paying stocks during inflation, especially multifamily real estate. Um, people are gonna need a place to live regardless. Rents will adjust for inflation and those stocks will continue to do well. So consider getting some real estate exposure if you don't already. They'll pay a dividend, you'll get very good returns. And finally, energy. Um, we're gonna get some energy data over the next day or two and the rest of the week. That's gonna be important and good to see. Hopefully, we'll see what happens with uh, supply information. Um, but there's no indication that prices are rising and we're starting to see some tensions possibly brewing in oil, in Iran and with Russia. So we'll see what happens. Um, the economies are not even fully online across the world. India, the third largest consumer of energy, is very much not online. Yet energy prices are hitting a two and a half year all time high, or two and, a, two and a half year high, headed towards all time highs, it seems, $80 a barrel. And if it gets there, these companies that we have are gonna be ridiculously profitable. And we're starting to see a strong move into energy happen today and yesterday and past couple of weeks more broadly. These companies are very underowned by hedge funds, by index funds, etc. Lots of these woke fund managers have refused to touch them. You know, Harvard sold, they had a protest on the football field about divesting their energy stocks. There's a lot of people who think that way. And uh, it's unfortunate because companies like Exxon are the leaders in investing in renewable energy outside of Tesla. They are really doing a whole lot. And later this year, you will learn more about their partnership with Porsche. You can go look it up, but we're gonna see what happens at this next Porsche race. So get some exposure to energy if you don't have it already. Very well priced stocks, and uh, we'll see what happens. Until next time, peace out.